Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing? I hope you are all on the right track for the PMP exam preparation. I hope you all have submitted the PMP application. Except, Hari, I don't see uh, many of you have indicated whether you have already applied for the uh, PMP exam or not. So in case if you are still uh, thinking about it, please go ahead. As I said, the more you delay, the more trouble you will have in terms of completing the exam or as time goes by, you will lose confidence. So take it seriously, put in more effort. Now in this video, actually, I wanted to address a query raised by Akshay. I shared a network diagram yesterday and I have asked to calculate or find out the critical path. And in fact, Akshay has given the right answer, but subsequently asked, sir, I do not know how to do the forward pass and backward pass for certain activities. So he asked me uh, how to do that. Uh, so I thought it's very difficult to explain in words. So probably I will record a video and share it. So in this video, I'm going to take that network diagram and I'm going to do the forward pass and backward pass. And we will find out which is the critical path. Okay, it's not difficult, but anyway, let's go through that again as a refresher for those who forgot what is critical path or how to calculate the critical path. That's what the idea is. So if you have time, watch the video so that it will be a refresher for you. So basically, this is the network diagram. Akshay's doubt is mainly on activities E, G and H. But of course, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the um, entire calculation so that uh, it's very difficult to just focus on one or two activities. Let's do it for all the activities. So as usual, you have to start with a zero. So I'm starting with zero. Then zero plus 10 will be the early finish. So early start is zero for activity A because that is the first activity. So the early finish will be zero plus 10. And this 10 will be the starting early start for all these successor activities. What are the successor activities? B is a successor activity to A. So that will be 10. D, D is also a successor for A. So that also has to start by 10. Similarly, e, F is also a successor. So that also has to start by 10. Now let's calculate the early finish for all the three activities. So for B, it will be 10 plus 7. It will be 17. When it comes to D, it will be 10 plus 14. So it's going to be 24. And then for F, it will be 10 plus 7. So it's going to be 17. Now let's look at B. What is the successor? C is the successor. So this is finishing on 17. So C must start on 17. And 17 plus 5 will be 22. That will be the finish, early finish for activity C. Then coming to E, uh, G is the successor. So since this is finishing on 17, so this must start on 17. And then 17 plus 6, you will get 23 as the finish for G, early finish. Now let's look at E. Now E has three predecessors, C, D and G. C finishes on day 22. D finishes on day 24, G finishes on 23. As we have discussed during the class, when you have multiple predecessors in the forward pass, you need to take the bigger number. Basically, C, D, G, all the three activities must be completed because they are all prerequisites for E. Only when all the three is completed, I can start E. So look at the bigger number, 22, 24, 23. So 24. So D is the activity that determines when E will start. So 24 is the start here. So 24 plus 2, the early finish of activity E is going to be 26. Now let's look at H. H has two predecessors, E and G. Now when G is finishing, G is finishing on 23, E is finishing on 26. So which is the more predominant one? E is the one that drives the start of H. Because once again, multiple predecessors, look at the bigger number. So 26 plus 8, so this is going to be 34. So basically this project will take 34 days to complete. That's the total duration of the project. So that's the forward pass. Now let's look back at the backward pass. For backward pass, of course, I need to transfer the project completion time and then start, right? So 34 is my latest finish. 
Now I'm going to work back the latest start. So 34 minus 8, I will get 26 as my latest start. Now what are the predecessors for H? E is a predecessor, G is a predecessor. So both I need to finish by day 26. So remember, I am working backwards. In case H must start by 26, then when E and G must finish. E and G must finish on 26, then only H can start on 26. Now let's look at, okay, of course, uh, for G, um, I also have to look at when E must start, right? So in fact, uh, for G, there are two successes. So it's a little bit complicated here. Uh, because this is not a good way of scheduling. Actually, ideally, this relationship is not at all needed because it's already G is controlled, uh, G is already controlling H through E. So basically, this relationship is not needed. But anyway, right, let's say that the scheduler has done some mistake and he has provided this link. Keeping that link in mind, let's see how to calculate, right? So of course, I cannot put 26 here, first of all, because... H alone is not the predecessor, E is also a, I mean, H alone is not the successor, E is also a successor. So I also need to see when E has to start. So 26 minus 2, so 24, right? So now only I can look at G because E is also a successor, H is also a successor. So when E is starting 24, when H is starting 26. So always when you have multiple successes in the backward pass, you need to take the smaller number, right? So whether it is 24 or 26, so it should be 24. So G must finish by 24, then only E can start by 24, right? So basically this is a redundant link, I would say. This link shown here is actually a redundant link in my opinion. This is not really needed. Even without this link, you do the calculation, you will get still the same answer, right? So that's okay, right? Because it's already connected. So there is unnecessary connection this. But for this example, just uh, let's leave it just like that, right? So I hope it is clear. So you should not directly calculate from H to G because you need to look at there are two successes. Always look at the number of arrows. When two arrows are coming, you should look at both activities, okay? Now, 24 minus 6, so this is going to be 18. So, since this is 18, F must finish by 18. 18 minus 7, so the start has to be 11. Now, coming to C, uh, uh, E is finishing on day 24. So, C must finish by day 24. So, E is starting on 24. So, C must finish by day 24. You cannot delay beyond that, right? So if you delay beyond that, of course, E will be affected. So you must finish by 24. 24 minus 5, <clears throat> you will get 19 here. So since this is finishing on 19, sorry, since this is starting on 19, B must finish by 19. So the latest finish for B is 19. So 19 minus 7, this should be 12. So the latest B must start is by day 12, it must start. Now coming to D. Right, since E is finishing on day 20, sorry, E is starting on day 24, D must finish by day 24. So this is 24. 24 minus 14 will be 10. So now we know B, when B should start, when D must start, when F must start. So let's look at for when A must finish, right? There are three successes, B, D, F. Let's look at the numbers 12, 10 and 11. So B must start by day 12, D must start by day 10, F must start by day 11. We should take the smaller number, which is 10. So A must start by, sorry, A must finish by day 10. So I'm confusing a little bit between start and finish, but I hope uh, you don't get confused. So 10 minus 10, so A starting is going to be 0, right? So that's it basically. It's a very simple calculation. It's addition, subtraction, just understand the logic. Okay, so now uh, let's find out what is the critical path. How do we find the critical path? We need to look at the forward pass and backward pass and try to find the critical path, right? So A, D, E and H, these four are your critical path.
So A, D, E, H is your critical path. B, you could see that there is a float. B, 12 minus 10. B has a total float of two days. C has a total float of two days. F has a total float of one day. G has a total float of one day, right? Is there any free float? B does not have any free float. Yes, C has a free float, 22, 24. So there is uh, two days of free float in C. And uh, uh, G uh, finishing on 23 and then uh, uh, E is starting on 24. So there is a one day free float at uh, G, right? So, so that's basically the calculation. So I hope this is clear. If you still have any doubts, yeah, uh, post it in the WhatsApp group. I will try to explain. Thank you. Take care. My best wishes for your exam.